Okay, maybe we'll first read this letter and talk about it before we go to Musa because now Musa be the main, the main cuckoo where we want to discuss this night. Let's just go through this letter. Wait, to Twitter, mm -hmm. when you edit, you try to change the topic to put the topic the way you want for Twitter as your pairing of you know the great change. Ah, no, because uh, I wanted to put the topic as a uh, Musa continue. Okay, okay, to change it, you know, you know the agree change. If you want to go there, you know the it doesn't change. You know the agree. I don't know why. Continue. Even if you send anything from here to Twitter, you know they go. I don't know. Okay, carry on. All right. Okay. So let me just quickly go through the uh letter they wrote to Eastern Governors. Nam the Kano family writes open letter to Southeast governors. The family of the detained leader of the indigenous people of the Afra IPOB, Mazen Nam the Kano, has written an open letter to Southeast governors, speaking their immediate action, seeking their immediate action and intervention to secure his release. That's Mazen and the Kano release. <coughs> <coughs> this is coming barely one month after the family had accused Igbo politician, Igbo political elite of abandoning the IPOB leaders to his fate. Prince Emmanuel Lucano, who wrote the letter on behalf of the family, raised the alarm that his brother's he brother is gra gravely ill and he should not be allowed to die in custody. He said that history would not be kind to the governors if they keep quiet and they do nothing to secure Kano's release, who has been unlawfully incarcerated since June 2021. Prince Emmanuel said, his brother's arrest and the continued detention were politically motivated and aimed at suppressing his voice as a freedom fighter. He insisted that his brother committed no crime, seeking justice for the marginalization Igbo tribe, for the marginalization, <coughs> excuse me, seeking justice for the marginalization Igbo tribe and the other Biafrans. According to him, Kano, according to him, Kano's continuous detention is because the Southeast governors have not come together as a people, as a people to sincerely demand his release. Okay. Okay, by allowing this flagrant violation of human rights to persist, your offices are complete are complicit in the suppression of justice. Mazenam Dekano is gravely ill and dying slowly. Biafra land, we hold you all accountable should anything happen to him. Prince Emmanuel pleaded with the governors to set aside their political differences and unite as one people and engage the federal government for the release of his brother, who he lamented is critically ill. He wondered why the federal government had continued to release terrorists under the guise that they had repented but failed to release his brother whose crime was challenging the injustice against Biafrans. Prince Emmanuel alleged there was a plot to kill, allow Kano die in custody and permanently silence him. Below is a full text of the open letter, open letter made available to Vanguard, subject on lawful detention of Mazen Nam De Kano, <clears throat> prison of conscience. So this is the letter. Open letter to the governors. 
I am writing this letter with utmost urgency and the deep concern regarding the unlawful and the unjust detention of my brother Mazen Namdekano. In recent events, it has become abundantly clear that my brother, a law-abiding citizen and a prisoner of conscience, has been wrongfully held against his will and his fundamental human right, have been violated under your watch. As a consigned family member, I implore you to rectify this grave injustice without delay. Mazen Nam Dekano is a man of impeccable, impeca impeccable character and a strong advocate for justice, freedom, and equality. He has consistently stood up for the righteous cause in our society. Challenging the status, challenging the status quo and working tirelessly to bring about positive change. It is truly disheartening to write his unwavering commitment to safeguarding human rights be met with such callousness and a disregard for basic principle of justice. <clears throat> <clears throat> The details surrounding my brother's <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> the details. The details surrounding my brother's arrest and the subsequent detention are deeply troubling and in in that of a system of a systematic failure within our justice system. The charges brought against him are baseless and appear to be nothing more than an attempt to silence his voice and undermine his campaign for social justice. It is clear that his detention is politically motivated, solely aimed at suppressing his, his, activi his activism and preventing him from continuing his valuable contribution to this to our society as a consigned family member i strongly condemn the unlawful detention of my brother and the and the blatant violation of his right it is your duty as the governor to ensure the protection of every individual civil, civil liberties, regardless of their belief or affiliations. Your obligation to uphold the principle of justice and the fairness should guide your action in every decision made. I demand that you take immediate and decisive action to secure the release of my brother. I call for a true and transparent investigation into the circumstances surrounding his arrest and detention, holding accountable those responsible for this egregious violation. Furthermore, I urge you to ensure that all charges against him are dropped as they lack any substantiated evidence. By allowing this flagrant violation of human rights to persist, your offices are complicit. In the suspense, in the suppression of justice, Mazenam Dekano is gravely ill and dying slowly. Biafra land will hold you all accountable should anything happen to him should anything happen to Mazen Nam Dekano well dear friends we all hear what uh our our brother the younger brother to Mazen Nam Dekano what he wrote 
to Vanguard newspaper. We all heard it. Mazen Nam Dekanu is critically or gravely sick, ill. But it's not the business of his wife or any other person. Kanon Takano is there trying to raise funds. Kanon Takano is there fighting to raise funds. Well, dear friends, the link is there. If you want to join the conversation, you are free to join us here. The next thing we are going to talk about is um, Musa, the lies Musa told, or the lies the Nigerian army are painting. We go tell you what Musa do, what he talk. We go talk and one after the other. Which man is only they come here, make it come follow me, do them. So this evening, we have seen that Mazen Nandikanu is critically ill. And there is nothing we can do other than to double our efforts. Anyhow, we have been doing it, we should double the effort. We should increase the tempo. That is the only thing we can do to save him. Because his hope today, his hope is that we are doing something. That's what is keeping him. Because all his dreams, all his visions, these people want to destroy. So we must do something to save him. If you love Mazen Namdegano, you must do something. And the something is now. You must do something. That is it. You must do something. You must stand up and do something. If you love Mazen Namdegano, if the wife of Mazen Namdegano love Namdegano, he she must stand up and do something. Two ways no day about it. There is no other way other than standing up to do something. Whatever you can do, stand up and do something. Period. So, my dear friend people, I greet all of you once again. So we move. Mazison, anytime you read, you let me know. Hey, you don't read the other one finished now. They will much in again. I salute everybody. You're welcome. I salute all lovers of freedom and uh, haters of freedom. And those that have been contracted to come and die in Biafra land, please welcome to Biafra land because uh, we don't open front for now. But remember to, as well, sign your dead uh, will and give it to your children before you leave home because Anything that comes into Biafra land does not go back as far as you're coming to kill our women and children. So we salute everybody. We're there yet. Mm. It's uh, so appalling to see that um, in 2024, the letter 247 just read, is just coming now. So I may ask a question. Is it um, now that these people now realize that um, there has been heel treatment method upon Mazinam Dikano all these years. Or are they just waking up? The family of Mazinam Dikano, are you just waking up now? You were sleeping before. It's now you have come to realize that um, the people that you were lobbying with, eating with, enjoying with, and um, attacking Simon Egba with them, that um, they are not um, giving you what you expected from them. Anyway, we don't have their time for now because they are very irrelevant and useless to us. The person where we get time for now, now this Mumuma where they for screen here. So two for seven. When you start in matter, you let me know. They will much anything. Now matter will want to enter now because nine be the man matter. Okay. Nine be the coco. I think I put a medley they see and well well. Okay. So, maybe we listen to Musa 
as he go use knife for cutting leg, he use gun to shoot in head now. Listen. Making it impossible for people to return to their communities, uh, declaring eight persons wanted, including a traditional ruler, not allowing the community civilian status to uh, invest in the mess. Making it impossible for people to return to their communities, uh, declaring eight persons wanted, including a traditional ruler, not allowing the community to bury their dead. That's on one side. On the other side is the uh, legal question that has been raised. Namely, that the military in investigating and handling the matter is overreaching itself because both the Constitution and the Armed Forces Act you know, do not give the military the powers to arrest to uh, civilians, that is, to uh, investigate, to prosecute, and that, that is the function of the police. And that even as grievous, as tragic as this situation is, that what uh, the defense headquarters should have done is not to declare people wanted, but to hand over the matter to the police to see to its logical conclusion, since civilians do not fall under martial law. What do you have to say in response to these two major criticisms out there in the public? Thank you, Dr. Abati. Um, it's, uh, it's always a great pleasure. Please go ahead, sir. Okay, thank you very much. I didn't get your last comments. Um, but just first and foremost, let me just appreciate Nigerians and Nigeria for standing by the military. Uh, uh, people have commiserated with us for the death of our colleagues. And um, I'm really, really very happy with the responses. I received letters of condolences from all over the world, not, in, not only in Nigeria. Uh, people tend to understand that the military is established as the authority of the government to protect Nigeria and to protect Nigerians. And that is why we view it very, very, that we take it very seriously when uh, criminals take laws into their hand against members of the armed forces or any security agency or any citizen of the country. Uh, uh, the issue of the uh, Owama issue, the attack was premeditated just because there are a group of criminals, cultists, militants, that because they make a lot of money from crude oil theft, believe they are both bored. And they did this deliberately just because the commanding officer and his team were ensuring that any acts of pipeline vandalization, uh, crude oil theft, illegal refineries, we are completely eradicated from that region. So that's part of the issues that came up. And you can see the Lieutenant Colonel himself is a very, very gallant, was a gallant of, uh, officer. He was a commanding officer. Uh, had the privilege of being his theater commander in the Northeast. Uh, he did extremely very well in the Northeast. We brought him here to stabilize the North Central. He did. He went to the North, uh, Northwest. He equally did the same. Uh, so for him to be killed, just like a chicken, beheaded, disemboweled, I mean, that is unacceptable. And we're happy that the Commander-in-Chief has given us a mandate to recover the arms to arrest the perpetrators. Now, I know a lot of um, comments have been made by different kinds of people, some from lack of understanding. When you have a joint tax force, joint tax force and involves members of the armed forces, that's the Army, Air, Navy, Air Force. We have the police, the DSS, the DNIA, every other security agency are part of it. So when we have arrests, we have joint investigation team. So it is not like the Army is taking laws into their hands. And, you know, I've had comments about what were they doing and all this. And once we are deployed on operation, we have the right and the mandate to arrest all acts of criminality within that area. So they were there deployed legally, they were doing a legal operation, and it was because the commanding officer felt the threat was not that high. That was why he went there and felt he could discuss with the individual. He did not go armed. 
that gallant officer, if he had gone armed, he would erase everybody in that place. But he felt these were people he knew, these are Nigerians that he could talk to. And when he stepped up to talk to them with his team, now I am trying to get the full video. I want to because there are there are questions that he was asked. I want me to hear, I want us to hear how he responded when they asked him about the people of the community he locked out. We will hear that. So I am trying to see that I get that video. I don't know why it is uh, not coming. But however, we go listen to him any way like maybe be. We go see him. We will see it. We will listen to it. Whether they like it or whether they don't like it, that is my own. I would like us to begin from beginning. And the, the people of uh, Okoma themselves are now complaining. They have called on the whole military to do whatever they need to do to get their people released. That to the point that even the traditional ruler, the traditional ruler, that went there willingly to hand himself. Look at me, I am clean. No, I don't know what you are saying. They said, No, you must tell us something. You will hear from Musa himself that as long as you are from that community, you must know the people and know where they are hiding. So they have to take the uh, traditional ruler from uh, Asaba to. Um, to Abuja to torture him, to rough handle him. That is the only thing they know how to do. Nothing more. This is the only thing they know how to do. But I will show you how he contradicted himself. <coughs> In this program now we are watching. So uh, since the thing is not fast coming, let's go. I would have loved it to uh, be uh, be a place I will be easily controlling it. But since it is not coming, there is not the me I go feed do. I don't know if I will try and get it again. Let me see. Maybe if I try again, it will come. Because here it will mean, let me see. If it will come up here now, it will be better for us. Or is it bad network? I, mean, I don't know. But meanwhile, um, we will be listening from here. Let's go. So, an Urubo Community Union in Delta State, known as the Urubo Progress Union, UPU, is urging the government and the military to conduct thorough investigations and ensure that only the perpetrators of the crime are punished. Arise, correspondent Jemima Boloko has more. Amid the national shock over the devastating loss of 17 military personnel, including high-ranking officers in Okwama and Urobo community in Ugeli South, local government area of Delta State, the perpetrators remain at large despite the military releasing images of eight civilians suspected to be involved in the killings. One traditional ruler among the accused, Clement Ogenerukewe, has voluntarily surrendered to the police in Asaba, the Delta State capital, denying any involvement in the heinous act. I'm on my way to the police to declare my innocence to the police. I know nothing about this heinous crime. Uh, I'm the traditional ruler, yes, I'm the traditional ruler of a Urubu kingdom. However, I know nothing about it, and uh, I'm going to the police to turn myself in.
writes the police public relations officer in Asaba, the Delta State Capitol, confirmed that the alleged suspect was transferred to the military for questioning. Now, the Urubu Progress Union, UPU, is urging the Nigerian government to conduct thorough investigations to prevent innocent citizens in Okwama and neighboring communities from facing undue harm. President of the union, who is also a lawyer, S.A. Guam Owe, emphasizes on the need for the release of the detained monarch while conversing a meticulous investigation to safeguard innocent lives. If a person is, is to be declared wanted, it should be seen that first and foremost, there was an invitation. If that invitation is turned down, there should be a repeat invitation. But from nowhere, you, you say a professor, a lecturer in the university, Delta State University, and the president general of a kingdom is declared wanted. Now, having said that, we, the Robo people, we condemn that declaration. Or in an unmistakable terms. terms. The prosecutor, then, the, the judge, judge of and the jury in his own court. As Nigerians mourn the loss of the soldiers, the UPU highlights the pervasive atmosphere of fear among the residents of Okwama and nearby villages. We, our people died. Human beings died in the process. In the process, a whole community, as we are told, was raised down. I believe you are listening very, very well. Now, nobody is saying anything about the people of the community that were murdered. Nobody says anything. Nobody is asking anything about them. Even to the point that the people that have run inside Bush to take cover for their life are still there and the, the Musa you see here is still telling you that they have not finished investigation. You will see all the sense in this video. So this man now is asking, you are asking for vengeance of the soldiers that died. What about their people that died? Nobody is talking about them because their life was nothing. A, raising down a community made up of children, young women, uh, women and then elderly people. The story is that uh, some soldiers uh, were, were killed. I want to say, yeah, for those who care to know, if they don't know what happened and what led to that event, they should dig deeper. In digging deeper, they will find out what actually happened. While the people of Okwama and neighboring area strive to resume their daily routines, the UPU is urging the government to urgently intervene and restore peace to the region. Jemima Boloko, Arise News, Worry Delta. Joining us now on this show as we dig deeper into the unraveling of the Okwama killings of 17 Nigerian soldiers amid accusations from members of the community, is the Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa. Good morning, General, and thank you very much for joining us on the morning show. Thank you, Dr. Abati. It's a pleasure being here. Well, General, first our condolences on the uh, death of uh, uh, the 17 soldiers. But now the uh, Urubo community and other communities in the Niger Delta are accusing uh, the Nigerian military of high-handedness, making it impossible for people to return to their communities, uh, declaring eight persons wanted, including a traditional ruler, not allowing the community to bury their dead. That's on one side. On the other side is the... Uh, you heard what uh, Abati is saying clearly. What about you? You're welcome. We heard what... Ruben Abati asked clearly that the community are begging to go home to bury their dead families and to know who and who is still not seen because till now they are scattered everywhere. The people that are like two, five, ten in the family are scattered. Maybe one is there, no telephone no connection no communication you don't know 
any if you have five children if you have two children maybe they are scattered and none of them is together with you so you don't know whether they are dead you don't know if your parents are dead you don't know if they are alive everybody ran away now they are asking give us little chance to go back to our homes you can come back to the houses and make the search since you want to hold the community siege, no problem. But allow us to stay in our house. They say, lie, lie. You will not come back to your houses. Nigeria military. Legal question that has been raised. Lemne, that the military in investigating and handling the matter is overreaching itself. Because both the Constitution and the Armed Forces Act you know, do not give the military the powers to arrest to uh, civilian status, to uh, investigate, to prosecute, and that that is the function of the police. And that even as grievous, as tragic as this situation is, that what uh, the defense headquarters should have done is not to declare people wanted, but to hand over the matter to the police to see to its logical conclusion since civilians do not fall under martial law what do you have to say in response to these two major criticisms out there in the public thank you dr abati um it's uh, it's always a great pleasure please go ahead sir. okay thank you very much i didn't get your last comments um but just first and foremost, let me just appreciate Nigerians and Nigeria for standing by the military. Uh, uh, people have commiserated with us for the death of our colleagues. And um, I'm really, really very happy with the responses. I received letters of condolences from all over the world, not, in, not only in Nigeria. All over the world for modern innocent communities that are sending their condolence letters. Look at your face. Uh, people tend to understand that the military is established as the authority of the government to protect Nigeria and to protect Nigerians. And that is why we view it very, very, uh, we take it very seriously when uh, criminals take laws into their hand against members of the armed forces or any security agency or any citizen of the country. Uh, uh, the issue of the uh, Owama issue, the attack was premeditated just because there are a group of criminals, cultists, militants, that because they make a lot of money from crude oil theft, believe they are both bored. And they did this deliberately just because the commanding officer and his team were ensuring that any acts of pipeline vandalization uh, crude oil theft, illegal refineries were completely eradicated from that region. So that. <coughs> Remember, this same Musa told you that they went there for peace mission. From peace mission, it has now turned into pipeline vandalization mission. Pipeline pipeline vandalization mission that is what it has become it's no longer a uh, peace uh, mission it's no longer peace mission we continue listen to him is number one he has contradicted himself number one contradiction number one you see it now contradiction number one he told the world not us he told the world that the, his military he sent there went there on a peace mission. Today, they have turned out to be the people that monitor oil pipeline, pipeline vandalization. Nigeria. Nigeria. When I tell you that Nigeria don't investigate anything because they already have script how to lie, people don't understand. Look at what CDS of a whole country called Nigeria is doing. Anyway, that is how they behave. That's part of the issues that came up. 
And you can see the Lieutenant Colonel himself is a very, very gallant, was a gallant of, uh, officer. He was a commanding officer. Uh, had the privilege of being his theater commander in the Northeast. Uh, he did extremely very well in the Northeast. We brought him here to stabilize the North Central. He did. He went to the North, uh, Northwest. He equally did the same. Uh, so for him to be killed, just like a chicken, mm. beheaded, disemboweled, I mean, that is unacceptable. You see, their anger is because that man, they feel he is mighty. By the way, he said he went to the Northeast, went to North Central. Is it not the place they are kidnapping people? He said he stabilized the place, that today there is peace there. Is there any peace in the north in the northeast or north central or mid north or western north? Is there any peace? Is he not in the Cardona? Is he not in the Benue State here that they kidnapped 30, 30 students or how many? Is he not in the same Delta State that they are they have taken siege that they kidnapped students yesterday two days ago? Is it not the same place? Nigeria. And we're happy that the Commander-in-Chief has given us a mandate to recover the arms to arrest the perpetrators. Now, I know a lot of... Um... Now, the Commander-in-Chief has given them the mandate to recover the arms. The arms that his men took to the community that is the arms the military went there with but he still tell you that they did not go there with arms how have you seen a military man in operation without arms nigeria military even nigeria police nigeria police to organ go send them to go buy sugar they go carry go not to talk of army nigeria Say they when they are armed to get your men no get liver. Go carry another one, come because you hear this one a king come. You go carry and come make it come king come lies people. The come king come and down. Biafra know how to shop things. We say their own no degree. Biafra know how to shop them down. So if you say your own, no, they do. Jafra know how to do, no, they do. They go do you. Eh? If you are no doing, they go do you. They go make you doable. If you are undoable, they go make you doable. That's just Biafra for you. And that's why I love Biafra. Because Biafra know the Biafra know the look face. Biafra don't look face. No, 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 now make we they understand waiting the play, waiting they go on. Listen to him, listen. Comments have been made by different kinds of people, mm. some from lack of understanding. When you have a joint tax force, joint tax force env involves members of the armed forces, that's the Army, Air, Navy, Air Force. We have the police, the DSS, the DNIA, every other security agency are part of it. So when we have arrests, we have joint investigation team. So it is not like the army is taking laws into their hands. And, you know, I've had comments about what were they doing and all this. And once we are deployed on operation, we have the right and the mandate to arrest all acts of criminality within that area. Mm -hmm. So they were there deployed legally. They were doing a legal operation. And it was because the commanding officer felt the threat was not that high. That was why he went there and felt he could discuss with the individual. He did not go armed. He did not go armed. But he is, the commander-in-chief has given them order to recover all the arms taken from the military that went there. Are you getting the message? And I want you to remember that the people of Okoma said that these people came, they opened fire on them because they are, they don't want them to go with their, um, their community leaders. 
they want to go with their community leaders and when the community say no because they have already taken away some community leaders before or youth leaders so when they say no they opened fire on them so with which arm did his men open fire you see why nigeria is what they are corruptible nation corruptible nation the nigeria that journalists have invited this man several times to talk they cannot invite any indigenous of that community to talk nigeria will judge they will conclude with what this same man only Eh, what that Betty? You are welcome. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, great dear friends. Now we continue. Hello, my people, fellow dear friends, lovers of freedom. I thank you all for watching and listening. Thank you for joining us. My greeting goes to my leader, Mazin Nam Dekano. I pray that God will release him. God will release him in a different and wonderful way. And I also pray that God will continue to lead and guide our Obato Biawan of Biafra land, the PM who is leading us currently. And I thank my media team, Minister, 247 Minister Parawa and uh, his deputy Van Van Van. My people, you know, Nigeria, Bo Nkendi Bonapo, Chiboa Nozo, you know, every day you'll be hearing one thing from the same people. They are all the same. They will always tell lies. Nobody controls them so they can say whatever they like in the same country a country where things work systematically if there's any unrest in any community it is the police that goes there to arrest people not the military even if they are securing oil pipe or they went to settle do peacekeeping I mean, it's not military, because this is not war from any country. Since, since, yeah. since, since it is a, an, a, a, an in-country uh, matter, is within the, within the tribe and within the country, it is the police. I know that they are all military, but military, I don't know when soldiers started doing the work of the police. This is because these men are not well-trained soldiers. They are Boko Haram. They are Boko Haram. And I can tell you one thing, that the reason why they are crying woe since this incident is because these are their own people that they send all the time to Southeast. Have they ever said anything about those who were killed in uh, Zamfara? No. Who are from Southeast and Southwest soldiers? Nobody has ever heard military cry like this for those of our men, 70 of them. You have never heard anybody report it. Because they will arrange soldiers from southwest and southeast to go to Boko Haram in Sambisa Forest. And because they are the ones sponsoring them, they will tip them off to ambush those soldiers and finish all of them. You will not hear anything. But because those ones that they tell you they are repented Boko Haram are the ones they send to southeast. That's, that's why they are crying. 
they will be lying from one end of their mouth to another. They will tell you it's peacekeeping. They will tell you it's oil, bunkering, security. What are they looking for in Southeast? They should leave us alone. My minister, I will leave you here so that another person can talk. Thank you so much. They will. Okay. Yeah. Let us continue. Now, I know a lot of um, comments have been made by different kinds of people, some from lack of understanding. When you have a joint tax force, joint tax force em involves members of the armed forces, that is the Army, Air, Navy, Air Force. We have the police, the DSS, the DNIA, every other security agency are part of it. So when we have arrests, we have joint investigation team. So it is not like the army is taking laws into their hands. And, you know, I've had comments about what were they doing and all this. And once we are deployed on operation, we have the right and the mandate to arrest all acts of criminality within that area. So they were there deployed legally. They were doing a legal operation. And it was because the commanding officer felt the threat was not that high. That was why he went there and felt he could discuss with the individual. He did not go armed. That gallant officer, if he had gone armed, he would erase everybody in that place. But, but they did. They erased everybody where they were, <coughs> where more than 50 people were, where they took out more than 50 unarmed civilians. How many more do you want? before you know that they brought down, they took out people. Those people now, nobody's saying anything about them. Nobody is asking about, even to go bury them. You say no, they will not bury them. Let them rot there. Because a soldier or soldiers were killed. So those people, no be mama born them now. Those people, they don't have families. Only the military people family are the ones that are demanding for justice. They are the only ones that need justice. The family of the people killed by the military, no one needs justice. They don't demand for justice. They don't deserve justice as well. He felt these were people he knew, these are Nigerians that he could talk to. Mm. And when he stepped up to talk to them with his team, they were rounded up and all shot, and not only shot, their body parts were cut, their hearts and uh, private parts were removed. And I think that is one thing that all Nigerians should stand against. I've had um, the robo leaders talking, yes, I have very serious respect for elders, but also like elders also speak from position of strength. They cannot say they do not know what was going on there. I'm sure you are aware that since they decapitated the bodies of those guys, there's a lot of human sacrifice that is ongoing within those general areas. And it was just part of them showing, you know, a way of saying that they have strength. And that's why they were able to cut, they cut the heads, cut the hands, disembowel them, remove the hearts, and these other things. I don't know what was that for. What was the intent? Uh, but whatever the intent is, we remain focused, we remain committed. If you notice, again, our operation was highly regulated. I mean, ideally before now, it would have been a situation where we would have gone and flattened all the communities within that area. But Did you not do that? Did you not flatten the community, burn their canoe, burn the houses, shoot to everybody you see? How do you want to do that again? It was major because we felt not everybody was involved. Mm. But we knew that a lot of people knew what was going on and kept quiet. And so that makes them complicit. But like I said, it was a major operation. It was a major response. We are conducting cordon and search operations to thoroughly search for our weapons and to arrest those that uh, conduct. Did you hear him again? They are conducting thorough searching to search for all their weapons. But they went there with no weapons. So which weapon are they looking for? You see how they shoot themselves for leg, shoot themselves for head. Two times he don't control. Number one, 
he told you that they are going that the commander in chief have given them mandate or authority to recover all their weapons he came back and tell you again because the military know that they are uh, good people they trust them they went there without arms they went on armed and they speak to them then these people rounded them and they took them away because if they were there with arms they would have taken down all of them and now he's telling you that nobody will go into the community because they are conducting thorough search until they finish searching and recover all their arms i believe you hear that yourself for you to understand Nigeria. Listen again, he will say it again. Remove the hats and these other things. I don't know what was that for. What was the intent? Uh, but whatever the intent is, we remain focused, we remain committed. If you notice, again, our operation was highly regulated. I mean, ideally before now, it would have been a situation where we would have gone and flattened all the communities within that area. But it was major because we felt not everybody was involved. But we know that a lot of people knew what was going on and kept quiet and so that makes them complicit mm. but like i said it was a major operation it was a major response we are conducting cordon and search operations to thoroughly search for our weapons and to arrest those that uh, yeah. conduct, uh, carried out this uh, dastardly act i'm happy with the traditional ruler that went uh, that submitted himself which is the best thing i wish all those other ones that were in the pictures would also equally do the same we are not animals we are not barbaric that will just go around killing people if they had not touched our armed forces, nobody would have been there. We have lived peacefully with them. We have encouraged them. We conduct civil military relationship. If you go to most of the communities, we provide amenities for them just to show them that we are not an occupational army. We are the Nigerian armed forces, and we are here for Nigeria to ensure that Nigeria is peaceful. So I just want to do, make that little clarification that they were legally deployed, and with their mandate, they are authorized to make arrests. They are authorized to interrogate because we have a joint interrogation center that work together as a team under the joint tax force. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, General uh, C.G. Musa. And it's, a, it's, it's good to see you here come to clarify some salient issues that have made headlines and have been a topic of conversation, particularly with what's happened in Okwama. But you touch on the traditional ruler praising his move to sur well, surrender himself for investigations, aside to others whom you've declared wanted. A number of people are wondering, what is the status of the traditional ruler currently? Part of the criticism was that whilst he, was, he had surrendered himself to the police, the police then handed over to the military, which there seemed to be a legal issue and that's what dr Bati had alluded to in terms of the handling of the matter the opposite ought to have been the case so can you throw more light on that and then what is the status of that because you've asked for the others to come forward but perhaps the reason why they are, sh they are unwilling to come forward is the fear of what would happen to them if they would get fairness of investigation and treatment if they do get into the hands of the military can you please clarify for that for us this morning I think that's really nothing to fear about because I mean he 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 brought himself up. Uh, the police the police bring it, the, the commissioner of police bring it, handing him over, handing it over to the joint tax force. The joint tax force has the police component, and because they are the ones having the mandate to operate, that is why he handed them over. So he's equally we have the police components that are there. So it's a joint investigation that is being conducted. We have set up a board of inquiries also from outside to also follow up, uh, and we're sure other questions will be asked. But what we want to, um, uh, Nigerians to understand, that we are all Nigerians, we love Nigeria, we put our lives in line for Nigeria, and so we'll not do anything against any innocent Nigeria. We are only after the bad guys. Anyone who makes himself one will definitely come after him. I understand that we have a mandate from the president. If the president gives me a mandate to conduct an operation, I will not ask him why. I will conduct that operation and then explanations will come in later. That is why I'm in the military. Uh, so, like I said, the, the, the chief is, is secure, is safe. Uh, nothing is going to happen to him. It's just a few questionings, and then we'll be able to clarify. But, you know, I, I don't want to comment so much, but I can tell you nobody will tell you he doesn't know what was happening. Okay. Nobody. Okay. Uh, maybe he did not take part directly, but he will not, know, he will not tell us he does not have the knowledge or okay. the understanding. He has already proven that the chief is not coming out. 
as long as you are from that community you are involved that's what he's telling you now nobody will tell you he didn't know what was happening that's what he has told you understanding what was going on okay but like we said the investigations will unravel most of these things and then actions will be taken okay see jim uh, i'd like to commiserate with the army once again it was very very tough for all of us to see those very gory scenes and that should never ever ever again happen in this country our commiserations at first i would like to ask you this thank you very much how are the families of these uh, gallant mm. troops faring good man. Uh, you know personal experiences how are they taking all of this i heard there were some of them among them that were pregnant and things like that how are they faring that's my important one yeah, secondly yes. Yes. secondly yes. Yes. i also yeah. would tie this around i heard there was an explosion around the cantonment yesterday it says it was a refuse dump or something i want you to throw more lights on this but thirdly most importantly was it about the community or these nefarious people that were perpetrating crime then why did the community have to suffer for it why was the community on lockdown why didn't the governor get access into the community why were they on lockdown okay. and what's the aftermath of your actions there because we've been seeing all sorts of pictures i want you just to make clarification what's the aftermath of your action are people going back to Okuaman now as we speak and were lives lost in those communities by your actions because you know you use the word flattened oh if it was before we'll have flattened and that cringed me that Oga Musa, we are in democracy. We are, we are no longer, you know, a military regime. Uh, so, she was like that even be used yeah. in the first place. Thank you. Yeah, I understand. Could, yeah. Could you pause it a bit? Mm. You go. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, Rufai has um, actually punctured a tire. Mm. Uh, Adabia Frabeti, welcome to the studio. And all your friends listening to us, I salute thank all you. of you. They were. Um, this is a war that is undemocratic, which Musa used here. We would have flattered the community. So that means the one Nigerian army is an our uh, is occupational army. But he, he rightly opened his mouth to say they are not occupational mm. army, but from what he said, they are occupational army. What they do is to kill and maim and to destroy, not minding if there is a democratic rule or not. Musa before came out to say, oh, the people came after them and they just killed them. Later, Musa came out and said, oh, um, the truth of the matter now is that um, we kill the youth because of oil and gas. We kill them also because we want to stabilize Naira crisis. We want to bring solution to Naira crisis. So you kill the Okoma beer France because of oil and gas, one. You also need to understand that because of the Naira crisis, you people are considering efforts to making sure there is stability in the Naira nonsense. So to stabilize Naira, not even to stabilize any other thing, to stabilize Naira so that Naira will still continue to reign, which means never mm -hmm. allow Ibu Man to become president again. For you to keep that word and keep that slogan going, you have to kill the Biafrans in Okuoma. You have to massacre them, you have to slaughter them, and Musa used another word. He said, when the commander-in-chief gives you an order to take down the community, that you will not say otherwise. You will just go ahead and take down the community, and then later you will come back to give the report. So, commander-in-chief of the armed forces of one Nigeria, Tifinubu, the drug lord, has given you order to go and kill every youth in Okuama community. After you feel him, all you have to do now is to carry out the last order. Go and kill all of them so that you can be able to fetch out the culprit. So all you have to do is to go ahead, kill, massacre, maim, destroy. When you're done killing them and destroying all of them, that is when you will now come back to come and say a word. Mm. Because your aim and objective now, your focus now is to go and kill all the youth according to your commander-in-chief of the armed forces. 
you said they went unarmed. Mm. If you went unarmed, how did you get to massacre some of the mm. youth? You massacred some of the youth. Spiritually. Took their bodies away, which is the normal routine that you guys do. When you massacre the youth of Biafran extract, you take the bodies away so that there will be no traces. Mm. The Inspector General of Police of One Nigeria have just admitted that they have been using the torture measure and tactics mm. on civilians that are predominantly Biafrans whenever they arrest and kidnap them. A torture tactics to be able to do what? To get evidences and to get confessions against their will in an unconscious manner, which is not supposed to be so. You are compelling somebody, you're putting gun on the head of the person. You made the person to go through inferior treatment and nervous treatment at the end of the day so that you can be able to force truth into them and force lies out of them. You force the truth into them. The truth that you want them to bring out at lies, you force it into them and then you bring out the lies and use it as the end result. Then Musa is telling you here that they have to do it the hard way because it is the way they have to carry out the routine. You went to the community and there was nothing that had to do with military military. There was a communal conflict where the two communities were fighting because of what they see in the communities that some of them say, oh, we should be the one to take it. This one said we should be the one to take it. Then Tompolo called you and said, oh, the other community is fighting against the oil. So you are now going to go and kill the youth of the other community because of the oil and gas. You kill them, you maim them, you take away the bodies. Then you now went ahead again to go and meet the traditional rulers. The traditional rulers wholeheartedly welcome you peacefully. And they serve you cola not. They serve you water, they serve you palm wine. You drank, according to our tradition, we don't play with visitors. We must make sure we serve you, we welcome you in a grand style. We will call the spirit of our ancestors to welcome you as well as we pray with the cola not and usoji. And after you must have eaten everything, you said you must take our traditional rulers alongside with you so that they will also be in detention and invariably be massacred the way you have massacred the other youth. They were asking questions, why did you massacre the other youth? But you were not ready to answer the questions, why you massacred the other youth? Because they asked the questions, you said, no, it is against your ethics for the traditional rulers of the community whose sole responsibility is to protect the interests of this community, to answer for their people and to ask questions and to know why things are going wrong. Because as the elite in the community, the people have to come to them for solace. They have to ask them questions on how they engage these nomadic military personnel who are serving the interests of Uthman Danfodio. So you must take the traditional rulers against their will to go and lock them up. At the end of the day, slaughter them the way you had slaughtered the other one. You have just made a point here. You said that the traditional ruler that turned himself into the police, that he cannot tell you that he doesn't know what happened. So there is no security for the traditional ruler. So you are going to make sure you torture him and then make him to accept the truth that you want him to accept. At the end of the day, you come out to tell us the falsehood from the truth you have forced him and tortured him to accept and then sign documents and papers that he is not supposed to have signed in his real senses. Acting out of compulsion. Is it done anywhere that you have to put someone in an electric cushion machine just to be able to get and inflict pain on the person to the person now confess and give you 
the truth the way you you want it because it is the way you do it because the person will become unconscious and then will be telling you whatever you tell him to say will be signing the paper you want him to sign so musa said if not because we did not want to finish everybody we would have flattered the community this only comes out from uh, the mouth of a Fulani Islamic jihadist terrorist. Because this is what Gumi said. Gumi said, if you don't give the Fulani terrorists peaceful reign, if you don't give them schools, if you don't come and talk to them, if you don't come and negotiate with them, they will continue to kidnap and to kill more students. Gumi said, if you don't come and negotiate with the terrorists, if you don't stop coming to bomb them in their enclaves, that the next phase you will see of how the full terrorists will come out will be very, very disastrous. And after he said it, it is happening the way he said it. Gumi said the full terrorists are in for ethnic cleansing to cleanse and to fulanize and Islamize every other person against their own will. Because they have all come together from all parts of Africa to come and fight for one thing. And Musa is using the same language, is using the same tone, is using the same interpretation in line with what the Fulani Islamic jihadists will say. So what is different having this kind of man who claims that the provinces they went to was Nigeria? The people were not acting strange or acting otherwise. The people were opening their arms to welcome this idiot that you see here on this screen. And this idiot is opening his mouth to tell you that they would have flattered all the community. We have seen women and children. We have seen fathers and mothers. We have seen girls. We have seen grandmothers and grandfathers we have seen babies starving to death inside the bushes. We have seen documentaries where the communities have been blockaded from the entrance of water, from the entrance of food supplies, from the entrance of anything that can sustain humanity because of the blockhead of the Nigerian Islamic Jihadist military. Rufai asked him a good question. Why are the entire community now the people bearing the bronze of what you are talking about? Is it the entire community that carried out the Hill Act? What promulgated the retaliation from the people? The Biafran people will not touch you if you don't come and kill their babies. If you don't come and kill their women and children, the Biafran people are peace-loving people. There is no point in history where you hear that the Biafran people will come hunting you down when you don't go to eat their chicken. The mother hen will not come after you if you don't go after the chicken. The mother hen will only come after you when you go after the chicken. The eagle, the hawk, only gets fired and only gets to see the attack of a mother hen when she goes after the chicken. That is when you will see the monstrous nature of the mother hen because you have come after the chicken, which is the baby of the mother hen. So, there was nothing like the youth in the community did this or did that. No. Musa is telling you, and it's very bold to tell you that they killed the youth in Okwama because of what? Because they want to stabilize Naira currency. They want Naira to come back to normalcy. They killed the youth in Okwama because they want oil and gas exploitation in those farms to continue.
So even when somebody's his father's bedroom, you now say, oh, oil don't come out. Oh. You now say, oh, government, at least pay us compensation and then give us a, another place or build us houses where we will now move out and then stay. Because you people now makes a law that every natural resource that comes out of our soil becomes a federal property. But if we die, we are no federal property. You will still bury us to the ground. But anything that comes out from the soil becomes a federal property. Okay, we discover oil. We call you. Come, take it. But just give us another place to go and stay. You refuse to give them anything. You just take over the oil and convert it to your own farm. You will now name it Oil Farm of Sudan of Sokoto. Sultan of Sokoto now will now have oil farm inside my father's bedroom. He did not plant any oil farm in my father's bedroom. Home. But he now becomes the owner of the oil farm in my father's bedroom. My father's bedroom will now become a drilling hole where they have to drill oil out. My father's name will not be added to the farm again. It is Sultan of Sokoto that will be the owner of the oil farm that was excavated from my father's bedroom. Okay, now even pay us compensation so that we can go and get another land somewhere, build house and continue our life. No, we cannot pay you. They carry Tompolo, give them contract, say any place where they see oil, whether or not for your papa kitchen or your papa bedroom, push them out, lock the place and make it to become federal property. Anybody that speak, call us. We will send Nigerian army. We will kill them so that the oil exploration farm can sustain. These are the things that happen. So when the youth now stand up and then speak and say, no, you are bastardizing our existence. You are destroying everything that we have. Our farmlands are all gone because the exploitation oil is destroying everything. We grew up to see lakes and streams. As I tell you now, the lakes and streams we grew up to see, you cannot drink of the purity of those water that you used to see there in those places anymore because the water has, con been, has been contaminated. The farmlands has been contaminated. There is no crop that you will now cultivate there that will be able to become something anymore. Everything has been destroyed and bastardized. So when do you now speak and say, what kind of government are these? No, you must not speak. They will call army to come, pick you up, kill you, dump your bodies somewhere. So when the, the traditional rulers of the community now say, why do you have to kill our youth? When they did not commit any crime, they only asked a question and they were asking for their right. You say, oh, if they had spoken so much, we would have flattered the community. We would have burned it down. We would have killed everybody. Because they ask question, because you are the ultimate Nigerian army. Nobody should speak. But you are not ultimate to Boko Haram. You are not ultimate to Iswab. You are not ultimate to Ansari terrorist group. You are not ultimate to ISIS. You are not ultimate to the full and Islamic jihadist terrorists. You collude with them because they have the same conquest, agenda, and ideology with you. Hey, Nigerian army, what a shame. And you are telling the entire world that some people from all over the world are commiserating with you and congratulating you for killing unarmed youth who resisted you arresting and dragging the traditional rulers away against their will. You open fire and kill all of them. The videos are there. The pictures are there. We've posted it on Twitter. They are too gory that we cannot bring it to YouTube so that they will not block the channels. They are too gory that we cannot put it on a live program so that they will not block the channels. From all those you that we posted the pictures of their lifeless bodies on the ground, how many of you saw them with, let's say, traditional protection that we wear when we go for war? 
How many of you saw them with penknife? How many of you saw them with army regalia? How many of you saw them with AK-47? How many of you saw them with pump action? How many of you even saw them with catapult? How many of you saw them with the ordinary gun which the, 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 the hunters used in the bush to go after the rodents? How many of you saw them with any weapon of any kind? The only thing you saw was that you saw lifeless body, bodies of women and children, young men that were lying in pool of blood. That is what you saw. The pictures are there on Twitter. And then CDS, chief of defense staff of a country that they call a federation of Nigeria, is here absorbing themselves of everything that they did enjoying the show and telling you that we did it very well and if care was not taken we would have bent down the communities and people are listening to all this and taking it so easy on them tomorrow all of you will say we are in a secular state i thank god that biafra is here and there is a government of biafra let the show continue so that by the time we start the retaliation, you will understand it very well. You see, nobody should blame the youth in this community because like a mother hen, you don't come and massacre the chicken and then you expect the mother hen to sit full her arms and watch you massacre the chicken, and then still take that chicken away from the mother's enclave. No, such mother is not a chicken that was hash of the eggs which the mother hen laid. This is a mother hen I'm talking about. How much more a human being? How much more a human being when a mother suffers in rain and sun, in pains and penury, carrying a baby in her womb for good nine months with the scorching sun of one Nigeria, with the hardship of one Nigeria. So mothers will carry moi moi on their head, hawking while they are pregnant. So mothers will be selling akara and pure waters on their head. Some of them will even be carrying load to sustain and to have something to be able to take care of the babies. Then, after a good nine months, and then within that one minute of them seeing hell and life, they push the baby out, then you nurture that baby, the baby now becomes a child that can be able to take care of you in the nearest future. Then suddenly you see another man cut that baby to pieces and then you will just walk into your bed and be sleeping comfortably. It is not done. Let Musa continue to confess so that the whole world will understand and hear that Musa is confident of killing Okwama Biafrans for oil and gas and for Naira crisis to be eradicated. Machineke, continue, please. Uh, Worry, sister, thank you. Welcome to the studio. I salute all of you and they will from here. <clears throat> on our way done, on our way come. What that Biafra, do you have anything to say? Um, our minister have said it all. You know, there are differences between uh, properly trained personnel in all these uh, professions, especially military. When they say military, we have what is called a uh, paramilitary. A well-trained soldier cannot use that word he used that made Useni to reprimand him and stop him there. You know, Nigeria, they talk about um, 
Is it democracy? A well-trained soldier cannot use that word, flattened. They would have flattened. How can you be proud to sit there and talking to the world? Because um, Arise TV, they feature in, in, in uh, YouTube and other platforms. You will be using that sort of word. As I said earlier on, in a situation like this, we have what is called policing system. And soldiers being combatant in nature, you know, that's according to their training. They are there for external invasion. If what happened at Okoma, that's a really south during the time it took place, is something that the police cannot handle. It will be the duty of the police to now invite the military to come and help them. But, you know, since this uh, agenda was opened by the Fulanese to Fulanize the whole country, unfortunately, our people are still trapped in the zoo until December 2nd, when Biafra will be officially declared. You cannot be going to any place with soldiers having the mind of flattening them, you know? And soldiers, when they went there to, to pick up their men and they refused, what they should have done is to go back and report what happened, not going back to burn the whole uh, city down. But as I said earlier, they always take their tiny, tiny, repented Boko Haram rats in uniform to Southeast while they will take the South East and Southwest in military to, to Zambisa forest and they will tip them off and they will go and lay ambush and finish all of them. And you will not hear anybody coming to uh, by this commander to analyze what happened to those soldiers, but they are only angry to this extent because it is their Boko Haram repented in the military. So we have to keep it there. These people are not properly trained soldiers. They are not. They are terrorists in uniform. We, we, we have taken enough from these people. Enough is enough. The only thing that I will advise Biafrans that are here is that we should remain strong, resilient, focused, all these distractions is merely because they don't want us to go. Nigeria cannot do without Biafras, unfortunately, but we are leaving them, whether they like it or not. We have to vote for our self-referendum, donate, register for our ID card, and we will be done. And off we go. My Prime Minister will say, Airborne. Thank you. Ndewo Adabiafra, thank you so much. And uh, we have Wari Sister Onyeka Network wouldn't allow you to stay. Wari Sister, you are welcome to the program. Are you there? Can you hear me? Thank you. Thank ah, you. Yes, welcome. thank you, my ministers. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my able minister. Salute to all of you. God bless you for your hard work. I'm always jumping from one platform to another, looking for people that are live so I can join in. You know, it's not easy. We will move. We will follow them bumper to bumper. We must wow. move. You see? Yeah. Uh, Mumu, that is his name. It's not Musa. His name is not Musa. It's Mumu. His name is Mumu. You see? He's the next uh, scapegoat now. He's the next scapegoat. You see what they did to uh, that, uh, um, what is his name now? This uh, this man in the bank that uh, um, I just finished with uh, Van Van Vana, uh, place. The man in the uh, bank that is in prison now, they're prison him now. now. After they use him, they now put him in the prison. 
Emefile, my brother, and I'm here. You did it. Emefile, is it the way they use Emefile and dump him in the prison? That so they go dump this of a gather room. Because if he's, if you look at the chair that is sitting right now, Manzi, it's because you cannot see the chair that is sitting. I'm very sure there is hot fire under that. That is, there must be a hot fire that is eating me. It's, it's, look at the face. He's dying in silence. Now, come the come the go so because they are telling him what to say. They are telling him what to do. How can you clear a whole uh, village that nobody should go back there? And you are the one that carry your mess to that place. You see, Mazi, he now said, oh, they went there with uh, as a group, uh, police go, uh, army go, uh, uh, the Navy. So how come it's only them like women, police not women, Navy man not women, and you say you went there in a group, like when that uh, Abate, uh, Tomatoes head asked and say, how come it's you army man now they go keep peace? Why not be police now they go? Why not be police go say, okay, these are the wanted people. Why are you people writing this list? You are the one doing everything on your own. He say we are in group. We are a group and they don't see any of those people uh, body. It's only the military body they, they, they saw. You understand? Because they know that we cannot do anything. They feel we are nobody. We are just a scapegoat goat to them. We Biafra, we are like a scapegoat to them. But we are telling him, the way they finish Obadiah, Lafia, that is where you two will end up. Obadiah, Lafia refused for them. He did not agree for their bidding. Look at what he end up. They just permit the guy. You when they do their bidding, they go do you like a mefile. You go end up for God's room. You will be the scapegoat for them. Because you cannot go, go scot free. You can't go scot free. You, you went there for something. And now you want to just wipe the whole thing off that nothing happened. That people around the world is coming. Who is the people around the world? Play, name one country that is telling you that what you are doing is good. Name it. Innocent chief, you people put his name. The golden king, you people put his name. The man voluntarily came, came out on his own, walked to Asaba. Look at me here, I know nothing. You people are not going to let him go. When I'm not going to let him go, governor said when he gets the state, you people refuse him to get there. I don't know the kind of ghosts you people have. Only, only a uh, uh, me of Sokoto, Nana, the Lucifer, Big Kanu. Those are the only people you people listen to. Like say we are not, we are not human beings. We are not existing. Eh? Now, Urobo UPU. This Urobo people when they come, so they call you UPU. They just be like Ohaneze in uh, Ibo land. This are the kind of people now. Now they, now, now they, they come out. All of them with Musa. All of them they be Mumu. Since over many weeks now. They've driven all your people, your family, your brother, your sisters, people that you say you be uh, UPU for. Eh? We're a progressive union. We now still now we now be. But you people cannot even save your own people. It's only now you are speaking that they should do investigation. Tell them to allow your people to go back home. That is the first thing you should demand. You demand for your people to go back home. They are dying in the bushes. They are not monkeys. They are human beings. They have home. Even though you burn the home, allow them to rebuild. You, uh, you pay you, uh, my uh, head or wherever you be, uh, a president, demand for your people to go back home. You sit and fold your hand. Whatever happened in Okwama will happen in your own villages. Don't think it will end here. If you don't sit up for them to hear your voice, you keep your mouth shut. Talking about say they should do thorough investigation. Who will give you thorough investigation? This mumu them. This mumu them. Now they will give you thorough investigation. What investigation are you crying for? When they kill innocent children, innocent children they carry gun. Are they carry gun or innocent women that they come? You people just blackmail them. It's like what they will do in Sabisa Forest. Your army man go the day front. Another army go carry gun. You go come am. You people have done that now. I can. How can you carry, you say that they come for peace, from peacekeeping to vandalization of a, 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 a pipeline? 
then you come with your top, 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 top uh, military there. Top, top military. If it is not planned for you to comment those people, they you be looking for somebody to blame in upon. Now, it's all to my people that is bearing the, the bronze. This UPU man, you must demand for them to go back home first and foremost, so that you will know that yes, and the most if they don't take to your to your uh, your plea, then you too will be mumu because they will not listen to you. They did not listen to governor, so nobody they go listen to. Nobody can go into that village. Nobody. You call yourself so you be UPU uh, robot progressive uh, union. So doing what? Doing nothing. Doing absolutely nothing. When I get on myself together, all of them will be mumu like cow. And they will do it will happen to you people. You people don't sit up. It will happen. They are using this mumu as a scapegoat right now. Just the way that they use wicked as mumu for Abuja right now. They destroy your own people's homes. The same way that they use this mumu now. Both of them now. They go town now for rope and drag you people in the land of the zoo when the time comes. And they will forbid in our body. You are from a middle bed doing the bidding. You are a Christian doing the bidding of this Fulani. And your your seat is on fire. You cannot raise up your hand and say, no, no, no. The one before you, what did they do to him? They permit the guy. Your days are numbered. They're doing their bidding. Well, there is a stage you will do it where you cannot do it anymore. They go permit you. Like the way they permit uh, about that last year. Like the way they permit the one before you. When they permit the one before you, they will do it to you people. Because you people will not, if you think you want to be permit the children of Chuka Kika Bama, you lie. You cannot go scot free. The finger of God is upon our lives, and you cannot do it. If you like, go and be a uh, uh, kidnapping our children now. We will not stop anything that we are doing. We are coming with you people. You wait and see the hair that we will bring. November is not far again. It's around the corner. November is not far. You will see the hair that we will bring. This one you are calling someone else's name in your mouth. I say that you put that you give her the name. That time you will you when you hear the name self, you will run. You will hide. You dare not call that name again. Mumu. All of them are mumu plus you will be mumu. Mumu sa. You people's cop don't fool. When a cop don't fool, you don't they throw away. Any country where they talk, say they keep the the permit uh, military. This that tell the country say we not permit innocent children. Tell the country say the people who not go permit they not get got last. They not get gone. They not go fit do what they not do. Now alone, na na also create those things. One not take when I carry out. One not do so. You people planned it on your own because that one not trace lie lie. British teacher not to lie. British teacher people have to lie. So now secondly, now lie lie, mumu lie, not be now mumu lie. Hopeless people everywhere, nonsense people everywhere. You cannot go and fight your mates. If they smoke, you go fight now for Afghanistan. Are you go, you go resign the next day. If they say go and fight in Russia, you will resign the next day. You cannot go and fight, but you are fighting innocent children that doesn't have not even the cutlass. They have not even seen the three square meal, one square meal to eat. So he, he starts to go and fight. You are sucking people's oil here. You cannot even settle them and make them feel at home. Make them nice. Rather, you want to come because they are nobody to you. You just want to come and wipe down and you think it's okay. You people think what you people did now, you people will just get away with it. You not lie. You not lie. You people will not get away with this. Especially you, this mumu, what they use. You will never get away with it. Never. Not now, not ever. You can never get away with it. Thank you, my brother. Say, thank you. I eat my say, mind. Thank you. Say, thank you so much, Wari sister. God bless you. Um, Mazonyaka, I don't know if your network will permit you to say anything. Can you hear me? Thank you. I think uh, the link is not accepting me. It's just kicking me out. Uh, I just want to pass this information here uh, before it kick me out again. Place they call a irate in Nemo State, uh, yeah. kidnapping little children there. Irate. Yeah, irate is in a worry. Close to in Nemo State. I forgot to say Nemo State. Can you hear me? We can hear you very well. Hello? Okay, okay, you. thank you. Can you hear me? 
a, a, a place named Israete in Imo State. Fulani yeah, has my kidnapped with 3 million naira. So I want to pass information. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Biafra. Thank you. I don't know, the link is not accepting me. Don't allow me to see. The link is kicking me out. No, my network is good, but I try to do some settings. Maybe you uh, to allow me to see. We can hear you. Should you want to talk? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, 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 For now, it's okay. uh, let me do. Uh, thank you. I just want to pass the information from here. I greet you all. They were mazi. They were mazi. So, dear friends, um, I think we should listen to the other part. Let him answer the question of Rufai. Let's see what he will answer. Let's listen to him. We put our lives in line for Nigeria, and so we'll not do anything against any innocent Nigeria. We are only after the bad guys. Anyone who makes himself one will definitely come after him. I understand that we have a mandate from the president. If the president gives me a mandate to conduct an operation, I will not ask him why. I will conduct that operation and then explanations will come in later. That is why I'm in the military. Uh, so like I said, the, the, the chief is, is secure, is safe. Uh, nothing is going to happen to him. It's just a few questionings and then we'll be able to clarify. But you know, I, I don't want to comment so much, but I can tell you, nobody will tell you he doesn't know what was happening. Nobody. Okay. Uh, maybe he did not take part directly, but he will not know. He will not tell us he does not have the knowledge or okay. the understanding of what was going on. Okay. But like we said, the investigations will unravel most of these things, and then actions will be taken. Okay. See, Jim Musa, uh, I'd like to commiserate with the army once again. It was very, very tough for all of Thank us you. to Thank see you. those very gory scenes, and that should never, ever, ever again happen in this country. Our commiserations. At first, I would like to ask you this. Thank you very much. How are the families of these uh, gallant troops faring? Uh, you know, personal experiences, how are they taking all of this? I heard there were some of them, among them that were pregnant and things like that. How are they faring? That's my important one. Yeah, secondly, yes. Yes. secondly yes. Yes. I also yeah. would tie this around. I heard there was an explosion around the cantonment yesterday. It says it was a refuse dump or something. I want you to throw more lights on this. But thirdly, most importantly, was it about the community or these nefarious people that were perpetrating crime? Then why did the community have to suffer for it? Why was the community on lockdown? Why didn't the governor get access into the community? Why were they on lockdown? Okay. And what's the aftermath of your actions there? Because we've been seeing all sorts of pictures. I want you just to make clarification. What's the aftermath of your action? Are people going back to Okwaman now as we speak? And were lives lost in those communities by your actions? Because, you know, you use the word flattened. Oh, if it was before, we'll have flattened. And that cringed me that. Oga Musa, we're in democracy. We are no longer, you know, a military regime. Uh, so, should words like that even be used yeah. in the first well, place? Thank you. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, I'm sure you're watching, you're watching what's ongoing. In, um, you're watching what's going in Ukraine, Russia. You're watching what's going in... Um, with Hamas and Israel. We're not, we not doing that. Uh, we try to do things differently this time around. Um, the aftermath... ...are not doing that, but they are burning down houses, shooting down, flattening innocent people, flattening the community, burning down houses. We are not doing that, though. Hmm. You will tell me the difference. It definitely will be that... Um, Gradually, when we finish the cordon and search operations, and cordon and search operation means we are searching every nook and crannies within the community. Because we know that a lot of weapons, because they have a lot of illegal uh, uh, funds, money from crude oil theft, they have bought a lot of weapons. During the um, uh, disarmament exercise that was conducted, a lot of them didn't hand over all they had. And because it was a riverine area, uh, close to other countries, they have ways that they also bring on in weapons. Because it was because they had weapons, they were able to perpetrate this again. So it is for us to thoroughly clean the community and ensure that no weapons... No they want to make sure they clean the community so that when they come, nobody will challenge them. How possible would that be? That they will wipe, clean, do thorough cleansing so that Whenever they come to the city, nobody, no single person 
we challenge them. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Whenever they step into the city, nobody, no, not even a single body will challenge them. They, they will do whatever they want to do and they will get away with it freely. They want to make sure nobody have even a common stick. Okay? Nobody will have. No explosives, nothing is left there, and that none of them is hiding. And I can tell you that at the end of it, the communities, the communities as always, will always go back and rebuild. Uh, we're working together with all the communities. Uh, nobody is doing anything um, uh, to impinge on their rights. Uh, all we want is that we're conducting this. Since it's an ongoing operation, we don't want them to come in and then they'll be mistaken for being uh, antagonists and so that they'll be shot or something. Uh, you mentioned the issue of flattened. Well, I use that because I told you during conventional warfare, when countries were fighting countries, it would have been, I mean, the way out. I'm sure, I know you read a lot. I'm sure you have watched uh, World War I, World War II. You have watched Desert Storm. You have seen what actions were taken, how um, communities were dismated completely. But this is Nigeria, and this is the armed forces of Nigeria. So we're duty-bound to protect Nigeria. So nothing will happen, uh, nothing will happen to them. Uh, as soon as we finish the cordon and such, and we're sure there is nothing like that there, uh, they will have access to their own communities to go back. But again, let us take it up uh, truly. Like I mentioned earlier, those communities know these criminals. The, some of them benefit from these criminals, these acts of criminality. And so if they say they don't know them, or they are not aware, uh, then they are far from the truth. But like I said, investigations will unravel uh, most of these aspects. And uh, we remain very, very professional. That I can show you. Uh, we will not do anything to impinge on the human rights of anybody. The colon assault operation is just temporary. It will soon be over. And once it is over, we're going to clarify, and everybody will be able to uh, uh, continue his, uh, his work. I'm sure if we don't do it thoroughly, and uh, there's an accident or an incident, and somebody is shot, it's going to be the same issue that the armed forces, again, is killing somebody. So we didn't want anybody to be there. We wanted to make sure that we're good people are secured. We're only after the bad guys, as, as, as mentioned. Uh, once again, thank you very much for commiserating with us. Um, it is extremely painful, I can tell you. I barely sleep. Anytime I close my eyes, I remember the families. Most of the wives were pregnant, some three, four, five, six, seven, eight months pregnant. Now they have lost their husbands. These children will come to this world without knowing their fathers, all because they wanted to protect their country. The children, those kids that are growing up, will grow up without a father. I mean, there's so much that can be done. But I can tell you, we will stand by them. The Air Force is there. The, uh, the president has himself, I'm sure you saw where he, like, he attended the burial, to show you his level of commitment. And he has also uh, awarded scholarships, giving them um, some incentives, houses, and then um, um, so many other things. Again, the national honor, which is very good. This has motivated our troops to continue to do well. Uh, one thing I also want to say is this. We are a professional army. We are Nigerian army. We are Nigerian armed forces. We are here to protect Nigerians. I will continue to protect Nigerians. Sometimes some things will happen and people don't have an understanding. And then, you know, it's open to speculations. We don't follow speculation. We follow others and we follow directives. But I can assure you that we always want to do the right thing. Maybe mistakes might be made, yes, because we're humans. But as much as possible, we try to curtail that. I, I'm sure you also know that we have standing court marshals for all our operations. The armed forces never, we don't condone acts of indiscipline. If you commit an offense, you go and you face court martial and you are punished accordingly. I'm sure you are aware that uh, just recently, a major general too has faced court martial and the outcome is being awaited. So we don't hide our own, we bring them out because we want Nigerians to trust the armed forces and to know that we are there for them, day in, day out. General, which takes me back to the same point about legality. Now, you said it's a joint task. Yes. Uh, operation involving yeah. various arms of the security uh, network. But you then said, oh, maybe people speak out of lack of understanding. Now, I brought up that issue because Femi Falano SAN made it an issue. And Femi Falano SAN cannot be said to lack understanding. So at what point is the uh, Nigerian military going to hand over persons who may be arrested to the police? Because it is essentially the function of the police to prosecute. That's one. The second part that I would like to ask you, there is a name that has been uh, mentioned. One uh, 
General Amagbe were not a colleague of yours. Uh, the, gen mean, yes. the other general yes. is said to be involved in crude oil theft. Yes. And we were told... Fake, fake, fake general. <laughs> that the military had been looking for him from uh, uh, Ukwama to Igboromotu uh, in Bayes State. Now, what exactly is it about uh, General Amagbe? Endurance Amagbe, his name is. Those two issues. Yes. He is, uh, uh, he, is, he is actually the mastermind. He is actually the mastermind. He is one who actually planned and executed this with his boys. And, uh, you know, they have um, a lot of issues of cultism within the general area. So, and again, because I, like I always say that because they were making money illegally, they, they, they feel that they are above board. They have so much money they could do whatever and they buy whoever it is that they can. But that's one thing, mistake they've made. I think they've, they've tried the wrong guys. And this time around, uh, the full weight of the law is coming after him and his own team. But and that's why we want to also appeal to Nigerians. Please. Where's you go? No vex. Musa just admit that the fake army personnel, the fake general, where uh, Epa Bati called him, is actually the masterminder behind what is happening. Yes. So, you know the person that you say is the master planner of what just happened. So, why don't you go looking for that person alone? You are arresting innocent people. Why are you then leaving the man that you say you know, and then you are going after the traditional rulers, you're going after the youth, you're killing and turning the whole place into a killing farm where blood is flowing. While he was speaking, there was videos of houses burned and the boats and ships that were in the water areas. Mm. Is that where the man that he said is the master planner of this thing is? It's getting the man, meaning that you must burn down those people's houses and communities. You know, when you listen to these people, at times, Belego, they turn you. The chief of defense staff of the country is admittedly telling you that they know that the person behind the whole thing is the man he just made mention of. Yeah. Then, you are not going after the person. You are now going to go and kill youth. You're not looking for the said person that you just said is the person that is the master planner. You now abandon that person and then you now go about killing the youth, burning their properties, blockading them from entering the communities, starving them, not allowing any food supply to come into those places. The, the, the children that were going to school cannot go to school anymore. None of them can even get rich to social amenities. And there is no welfare because now he also went on to say during the world war one and two and this and that they saw how communities were yeah. destroyed they saw how they keep people so you are now giving us a kind of a template that the same way that they massacre and destroy communities during world war one is the way you people now had wanted to destroy the communities are you now in world war four or world war three or world war five so you're trying to use the same template of what happened in World War II and III and then tell us that this is the way you should have done it in the communities of the Biafran people. Why haven't you done this to Niger State where you have the highest and the largest numbers of Fulani Islamic jihadist terrorists that have taken over the communities? Why haven't you done this to over eight local governments in Borno State, where Fulani terrorists are the ones collecting taxes and they are fully in charge of the administration of the day to day activities of people in Borno State. Why are you not doing the same to the terrorists in Sambisa Forest? Why are you not doing the same to those in Borno? Why are you not doing the same to those in Samfara? Why are you not doing the same to those in Katsina? Why are you not doing the same to those in Abuja? Oh, in Biafra land, 
because you hear that they are all beer friends, you can now open the fire, you burn their communities anyhow, you kill them anyhow. You say you know one person that you're looking for, only one person. No? The other, Dogo, Dogo, the terrorist in the far north, who said, I killed over 80 something people in a day. In just one day. No, no, so, uh, Mazi, sorry, not that he said, it was confirmed that he did kill them. Okay. Mm. They haven't gone for that Dogo. Wandume, that sacked communities, slaughter and desolate, yeah. cut off heads, rape women and children with his gang of terrorists, you have not brought him to book. You did not go and burn down the communities where they say he is related to or where he must have lived for years. <laughs> In Biafra land, the case is different. When you enter Biafra land, you say you are looking for one person. Then you will now go on a killing spree. You will kill, 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 burn the communities, burn properties, to the point that you want to take the traditional ruler alongside with you. And they say, no, you cannot take the traditional ruler. He is the custodian of our tradition. Allow him to sit down here so that he will see if you're coming to massacre all of us. And if you want to massacre him, massacre him here in our own traditional ground. In our own palace so that we will see what will happen. No, you say no. Musa, let the show continue because uh, people should be taking records. So that by the time the Biafran people will now come back for the revenge. You will not say we did not hear it. Everybody should be hearing what Musa is saying. You know. It is the order of Tinubu as the commander in chief of the armed forces. He has repeatedly said it more than three times that as the commander in chief has given him the order, all he has mm -hmm. to do is to go and kill, kill every Biafran there. After he finished killing them, he will come back to tell of how he carried out the killings. So, we did listen. And we are taking the point, one after another. Mwacheneke, over to you, please. Helen Peters, welcome yeah. to the studio. We see, we see Helen. Helen, can you hear us? Like, I'm hearing very faint. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear we can me? I can hear you very well. Loud and clear. Yeah. Ah, but I'm hearing you very fast. Anyway, good evening, my ministers. Thank you for bringing me in. Good evening, our great mother. We appreciate your good work. May the good Lord continue to protect and strengthen every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Like my minister said, that listening to this man, like Bele will be turning you. And that is what makes me into coming because I was like busy, I was listening, but I couldn't hold myself. How can this man just come up now and be saying this trash to people's hearing that they are conducting an operation of destroying people's uh, houses, burning people's community down, that there is war, war, I don't know war for, war, war for, I don't know war for, or World War Three, or I've got uh, 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 um, uh, uh, Gaza and the uh, uh, Israel war that is going on in Biafra land. I don't really understand what is going on. How can this man just come now and know that the uh, soldiers, they have wives, that when they are killed, their wives some are pregnant, they're in Biafra land. It, but when they kill them, it did not. Those wives, they, they are not pregnant. No. They are not soldiers that they should mourn. It is only in Biafra land that they will have the strength to conduct whatsoever power they want to conduct. Uh, this is a thing of shame. And them asking their questions, they cannot ask them, why is it that this enforcement that you are carrying out, why don't you carry it out against those that are killing you people in the north? So that we will know that this is how you have been operating ever since. And this is your own way. Nobody can stop you. No. 
we are only just seeing that soldiers can easily just carry out such an operation, destroy people's property, burn the community down, sake of they are looking for just their soldiers that they said they, they, they buy. I can't, I don't understand. Because they saw that we don't have the uh, means of defending ourselves. They have. They said they, they have acquired ammunition and all this that such ammunition that is not with the the terrorists that is killing them in the north. I don't understand. This is a terrible situation. So our people, you need to defend yourself. Oh, they have brought the word. They said after killing and destroying you, that you will rebuild your community. That is what the man said. Do. I heard that one from him. He said, after they conduct and burn down your community, you will go back and start rebuilding. You will only go back when you are alive. If you don't defend yourself, you are gone. You better start defending yourself now because these people, they are out to kill us, the Biafras, and nothing else. Nothing else. They don't have good plan for how can a soldier just sit on a public and a, a world he knows everybody is watching him all over the world and he's agreeing committing this kind of comment against human being that there is war. If there is war, the war between uh, Russia and uh, uh, Ukraine, they are both exchanging guns. It is not only one side that will be killing one person, no. If they said they declare war against us, they should let us know so that we also fight back. What kind of a talk is this now? War is not just only one part. It is between two people. How can you say Ukraine and Russia, you are described, you are using Ukraine and Russia against innocent citizens that you, 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 are, you are just oppressing, killing for nothing sake. You are using them for example. What is between two people? Hamas and Israel are fighting. Hamas is releasing bullets. Israel is releasing their own. They should let us know. Man, I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. I can't hold my peace. That is why, no. I just have to pour out my heart. Thank you very much. Let me eat my mouth for now. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Shelly. Please, you can mute yourself because a lot of yeah, people... I'm not even hearing you. I think I should go out and we'll come back. Okay, now, and you shake your own volume. Maybe you reduce your volume. Aha. Uh -huh. So, dear friends, we heard everything that Musa said. Number one, like our minister for info said, they know the person, the culprit, the offender, not even just <coughs> sorry, <clears throat> they know the chief organizer, the headman, the hitman, the kingpin, the general of the whole matter. Yet they have not begun looking for him. They have arrested, they have shut down, they have flattened the community physically, spiritually, emotionally, to the point that even the governor of the state has come out, pleaded with you people, allow these innocent people to go back to their homes. You can continue with your session. You can continue with your blockade. You say to the governor, no, the commander in chief has commanded. To the point that even the governor was restricted from entering that community. He was turned back. He could not go into the community to see the level of damage these people has done to the community. And you say you are a professional army. No, you are Nigerian army. The Nigerian army that is mixed with repentant Boko Haram terrorists that is mixed with over a thousand or ten thousand repentant repentant terrorists with those including thousands in your in your force you have uh, a repentant terrorist you have um uh, 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 forgiven 
corporate, you have towns that has been integrated into your police. You have those that uh, made a court gave you command to release them. And you say you are professional. Now you wipe down the community. You come here to tell us that they will build back their community. They will build their community. Not that you, as the army or the state or the government of Tinubu, is going to rebuild what you destroyed. Your anger is that they killed your hitman like a chicken. Yes, that is to tell you that the place he went to north, he did not fight anybody. The place he went to the northwest, north central, north east, he never go there to fight anybody. Because those, uh, what do you call them? Those uh, dogokide, they don't confront them. Dogokide is on his own, doing his own. They will come and tell you today, we neutralized 200 terrorists for where audio, audio, make gonna get the message. So, dear friends, it's time you know your real identity. Like I used to say, if you don't know your location, you will not know your destination. You should know your location now. If your government, as you call them, your government have denied you access to your old house for days with your kids, little, little children we saw in the bushes, for days, now if not for weeks, and you are saying they are your governor, you are, they are your president, better you begin to think again, eh? <coughs> better you begin to think again. Rethink. Musa is here telling you cock and the bull story, or tortoise is king of the animal story. That tells by moonlight. No super story. He stares by moonlight. Where lion can cook for you. In Nigeria, everything is possible. Lion can elephant can fly. If you have not been active in, in this Biafra restoration, my brother, my sister, you better wake up. That you are not Igbo is not the answer now. That you are not um, Calabar is not the issue now. Even the uh, useless man is now telling you he is an Igbo. Whether you like it or not, that he is an Igbo, you cannot deny him that. That is his right to be an Igbo man. He is an Igbo. Today, the same mouth he used to tell you that Igbo has to <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, sorry, my channel. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You know, listening to Azare Dokubo is um, like um, when you just want to take some coffee. You look for popcorn, you put it inside plate, and then you put coffee. You just be picking it like this, one one, between for your mouth, just a while away time. Because uh, Azare is the same person that said um, he was evil before. His father was Igbo. And there is no how you can take that away from him. And then later when he needed a contract from one Nigeria, he came out and told them, I am no more Igbo. I can never be Igbo. Igbos must be destroyed. Later he came out, I am not a Biafra. A job is not Biafra. It sure can never be the people of Calabari and no Biafra. It is with that same uh, idiosyncrasy that some foolish people woke up yesterday. Oh, Emmanuel, go please enlarge this my screen, enlarge my profile because I want to explain something to some people. Enlarge my profile. Okay. It is because of the nonsensical mindset of Asari, that some you that were following him woke up someday and then say, Ijo. Can't save again. 
Two in condition. Two blank. It's coming out very clear for me. Yeah, it's coming out very clear. Let me restart. Okay. We see the picture, yes. but we didn't see you. Well, You can share the picture. Mazi, you can share the picture as um, share the picture so that uh, only the picture. So we can project the picture. Yeah. It's not clear again. Okay. Am I coming out now? Very well, yeah. Sorry, my connection is uh, kind of bad. Okay. With what, um, with what, um, with what, um, Asari said, he confused some idiots, and then those idiots allowed those things to enter their brain, and then they woke up someday. You know, it's just like me now waking up someday, and I say, uh, ethnic people, the Bible people are not their friend. Why my father fought the Biafran genocide war side by side with Ojuku. If you then you don't ask yourself, why was Philip Ephiel? Why was General Achibo a Biafran? Why was Major Orok a Biafran? Why was Major Ekande a Biafran? These are Biafrans that were massacred and slaughtered, same way they had slaughtered some of our Igbo brothers and sisters and other ones from other tribes of the Biafran extract. The person that suggested that we should adopt the name Biafra as the name for the new republic was a German, Frank Pogbiko. Mm. Was he Ibo man? Was his name Ibo man? Did they say that he was from Enugu? Did they say that he was from Anambra? Did they say that he was from Ebonyi? Did they say that he was from Abia State? No. He said he was a German. And where have they classified the job people to come out today? The same place that that Momo man came out and said, Each of people are not be a friend. Each of can never be a friend. When you see him speak, he, he's, he's, he's hacking like a pig. So this man is just good that when you just want to laugh. Uh, 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 Mazi Sonny. Yes, sir. I don't know if uh, Shuku Solomon is watching from your side so you can share or other Biafra. Please, if you can share the uh, link so he will come in because he's asking uh, of link to come in. He said he want to come in. Uh, he want to come in. Mm. Okay, I will try to post the number when I finish. So, Biafran people, the point I'm trying to make here is that um, Asari Dokubo is uh, someone that you don't need to take him serious. You just need to use him as a laughing stock whenever you want to laugh. That is one thing about Asari. Because these ones that woke up and say, we are not part of Biafra, enjoy you to one Simon Ekba. They did not even open their mouth to say these things when um, the Fulani Islamic Jihadist terrorist army did not invade their community. It was in the middle of this war the middle of this slaughter and genocide that they now assemble them and told them come and write this nonsense so these are the likes of the peak that will come out to speak and uh, one can only make reference to him when you just want to laugh because it's a useless follow because their ancestors are here on the screen frank Obiko is the ancestors he knew the boundaries of biafra he knew where they came from, he knew what Biafra is all about before their children of today decided to go and sell themselves to the devil. So, as you go over to you, let me post the link for 
to the person that needs healing. They will. Okay. So, dear friends, uh, when you think you are not an Igbo man, is is Biafra is Igbo man thing? No, it's no longer that time. Biafra is no longer Igbo thing. Those that thought it was Igbo thing is not about Igbo thing. Why do you think they are in in data today? Why are they trying to flat get everything flat? Why they want to flatten everybody, everything? because they want they don't like you heard him he said musa said they want to make sure not even a cutlass not even a kitchen knife will be left not even a stick a stick um, broomstick will be left so that when these men will come to attack you you cannot fight back remember this exacting now is what they did in the middle belt in the northern plateau they even the hunters guns were taken away from the hunters the hunters weapons were taken away from them so that when these funanese will attack nobody will fight back you will only sit and watch them do whatever they want to do like uh what is his name gumi said you don't have to challenge them whatever they ask you to do you have to comply with them if they say you should put your neck down on the stick or on the uh, iron you put they will take it off before your eyes they will take your wife they will take your children and there is nothing you can do you don't have to challenge them and then after you have to go and plead and beg and worship Gumi, then Gumi will tell you if it is possible to see your children or not. That is a country. That is a country. I want us to understand that in this life, if you don't know your destination, you will not know your look if you don't know your location you will not know your destination anybody telling you now um is um what do you call it is um uh, because you are not a biafran no no it's not because you are not a biafran no is is if they are telling you now you are not a biafran ask yourself the question then why are they fighting you why is it that they want to take away all your arms, everything you have for self-defense, they want to take it away from you? Why? Why would police, in the before the very eyes, in the presence of police, the kidnappers would kidnap you and the police will not do anything? Have you imagined, have you asked yourself, why? Have you asked yourself, why is it that the little boy, Dogogide, is now in charge of mining site that signed contract to the uh, uh, Chinese people? Why? And your oil, your oil that is the reason why they are there now in the name that they are for peacekeeping, that your oil is what they are fighting for. But in the north, even in Benue State, in Niger State, they have gold. Mineral resources are everywhere. Nobody is saying anything about them. Uh, you say you are Jean Domman. Jean Domman. Hello, every man. Who are you? I want to see your picture before I bring you into my studio, please. Jandoma, let me see your picture. I want to know who you are. To be sure you are not those that come here to mess up. Are you a Biafran? Let me see you. If not me, I'm not bringing you in. Eh? So,
So when they tell you, you are not a Biafran, it's just to deceive you. And at the end of it, you will be their prey. In Bedway State, I want you to remember that the project of 1,000 houses for the Funanese for beginning has not been, the plan has not, is still in existence. That plan is still in existence. I want you to remember this. So don't think they have removed the plan. Don't think they have stopped carrying out the plan. Before you know it, they will tell you they are commissioning the houses. So you should understand. Before you know it, that commissioning the house is built on the land of the indigenous that are now in IDP camp. They are building new houses for the Funanese. Why the real indigenous of the land are in, um, in IDP camp? is for you to understand what we are saying, for you to understand what we are saying. Okay, Shukuma. <coughs> Shukuma, can you hear me? Okay, Shukuma, you don't have network. You can go out and come back again. Even you, John Dan, John Donman, John Donman, hello everyone. You don't even have network. Go out and come back. But uh, because of this, your name, I must know who you are before I must see your face before you come inside the studio. Imagine, Sonny, can you see, hear me? If you can hear me, we have to round up. So make I start with the worry sister. Be a worry sister, be that. Namio, Nami be that too, not be another person. Uh -huh. <laughs> I beg you, have microphone. Okay, John Donman. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, you can remove your camera now if you don't want to use your camera. I have so to make a way to some let your Donman go. Okay. John Donman, you can off your camera now. Uh, let me bring you in. If you don't want to use your camera, you can off it. Okay, <clears throat> he's having network problem, <clears throat> so you can go on what is this now? He don't have network. Okay, okay. okay. I was thinking maybe he'll meet himself. Okay, my brothers and sisters, like we, we don't talk and plenty for here. We'll be saying it. We will not stop preaching. We will carry on preaching until the gospel is being preached to the four corner of Biafra. Biafra, Biafra will come. So we have preached it to the four corner of Biafra. As people can see, now everything boil on Tunubu because this Mumu man say uh, is the the press that asked him because of uh, armed forces, according to them. So he's the one sending people not to go to their own houses. He's the one that is stopping people not to go to the people that kill those three kings in, in their village, in their community. How far did they go after them? Did they because they are not no. army? Did they go after those mm. people? We have not heard anything about them. They did not say anything about them. They are not human beings. But it's only Biafra land that they will start, like my sister said the first time. The armies that have been killing the Sabisa forest, the army that they've been killing. What have they done to those people? Why are they not looking for them? Like you said, you said there is this man has killed how many people? What did they do to him? 80 people <laughs> in one day. What? Why are they not going after him? Okay, now, now you open big man. I say confusion will be the lot. They have turned to fools. You sat here and you said, Oh, is the man, I know the man with his gang that orchestrated this uh, by. So if you if you know, why are you pretty people's name wanted? Why are you printing a, a chief, the a community leader? Why are you printing those, those people's name? 
Why are you rich people? Then why don't you allow the innocent to come in into their various homes? You know this man already. Why you just go for him and his boy is alone? Can't you God? Your name is not Musa. Your name is Mumu. Mumusa. You are a Mumusa. Eh? In a, a President Bidi. That one that looked like drug addict. That one that cannot know. That a, a, a dementia man. It's a dementia. That dementia man that cannot remember. You are telling us now that uh, uh, that dementia man giving you order that doesn't know his left from right. That cannot even talk one full sentence before speaking because when people insist, they don't speak straight. Ask you to come and drive a whole community away because you are doing their bidding. What a shame. Shame on you. Your generation will forbid you. Your children will be ashamed of you. They will be ashamed of you because at the end of the day, you don't know what you are doing. You are the one that doesn't know what you are doing. Because person will not tell you to go and put your hand in a fire that you will go. You cannot fight a bad when you see the hand. You are fighting innocent people that cannot even have three square meat to eat for Christ's sake. There are some of them are be sick. Some innocent children will die in that bush. And you will not allow them to come in into their various houses. Thank God, Nigeria, zoo country is not that cold. And now the rainy season is coming. Rainy season is coming. Allow them to enter their houses so that snake will not bite them in those bushes that they are. Go after the man that you know. Are you scared of him? If you know he did that uh, thing, are you scared? Are you scared of him? Why don't you go after him? Ordinary Tompolo that you people look for Bante on Tompolo said, when Tompolo, now you went back giving Tompolo money to to a, a property. You think you can catch this person? If you know this person, go for him and allow people to come back to this. Because it will reach your turn one day. It will reach your turn. We are coming. We are coming. We are coming. Our our Taneru is coming. The Obato Bie is coming. It's coming for you people. It's coming for you people. Nobody will kill or permit or battle person and go scot free with it. It will not happen. Not, not now. You tell your Tunubu that the bidding that he has asked you to do is not the right thing to do. No country will support you. They are baraguru. See you when the time comes. You people are doing your own now. It's okay. The all these people that uh, batting a uh, tomato's head is giving you interview, and they cannot even ask you simple question now because they will be dodgy. They don't ask that question. Eh? They, they cannot even ask you a proper question. Okay, so you know this guy. Then why don't you allow other people to come in? They cannot even say that to you now. They are allow you to and go, just like that. We are coming for you, people. Beyond France, we have to sit up, join hands together. At the time of, uh, I'm not Igbo, I'm not a uh, Yoruba, I'm not a, uh, uh, I'm not Igbo. That's gone past. He has gone past. They they don't care for nobody. Even the EK clerk that deceived most of you people because he's the only one around now that is close to power. Deceived people. Look at him. They dealt with him too. So you people should not listen to anybody, any, any police, whether uh, you or progressive union, don't listen to them. The only person that you listen to is our Atobie. The Agbaragururu. The Agbaragururu. Turn that way, they scatter this stupid zoo. 
the only person you will live. That is the good guy that wants your good, that wants your betterment. Nobody. We are chatting here today is because of him. I'm having Matt to speak today is because of him. It's because of him, nobody more. We can, we can analyze and preach and do everything. It's because of this good guy. The Europe Progressive Union for over many, it's almost a month now, if not three weeks now. This these fighters, it's only now that are coming. Awards, our Albate they came the next day to preach, to, to give order. Some obey, some not give obey. They are for you people. Whether you believe it or not, they've started. If you don't move, if you don't take action, I'm telling you, we know these people more than you people because we have university. I don't have the canon. The leader of Biafra, we went to his school with him and he taught us how these people behave. This animal, this cowardice. Unsuccessful. Please listen to our leader when he speaks. Please. The radio is coming. We people must listen. When we talk, we are not listening. It's what it is. It's what we are saying. See anything? We cannot say anything different from what we are saying now. They have started, they will never stop. And they said the, the uh, president is behind them. Can't you see? True, true. If the president is not behind them, how come? They did not allow your own governor, if your governor that you said is your governor, the sheriff, he could not even come and see the damage you people have in that village. He can't. Nobody can go there. Are you still going to fold your hand and not follow Simon Ekpa? Are you going to fold and say, oh, we are not Igbos, we are not Biafra? That time has gone past. All of us now won. I will go remain won. Mark na go check history. History go tell na say will be one. Now this full and na they they divide us and they no go divide us again. They no one more. They no they want separate us. They want more could they fight? But we are not going to fight anymore. We are tired. We should be fighting them and not fighting each other. The time we used to fight ourselves, we need to fight them. We will be free. We will be free and live like a proper human being. Live like the, the 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 queens and the kings that God created us to be. That's, that's why He gave us things. He gave us things Definitely. to live life. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless. Thank you, Warish. They were uh Helen, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay, I beg if you go just uh yeah just a do quick your submission one. with just two minutes. Yeah, away. just a quick one. Thank you very much. Thank you, my sister. Uh worry sister, I appreciate you. Uh well, it is left for our people to know that what is happening to them today now is the division that they have created among us. Because they cannot just boast now and say they want to go and destroy or level our uh, uh, Igbo brothers from Biafra land. No, they will never dare such a thing. This man will not sit down there and comfortably be vomiting rubbish that they are going to level there, no way. But because they, they knew that they have divided us, that our people are not separating themselves from their own blood, now they push us to one corner and want to destroy us. So now they should be able, you people should be able to wake up now and know whom you are. That you should have synergy with your brothers, the Igbo brothers. If not for them, you will be gone. On that, just, just, give them just two days. They will level every one of you and nobody will come out to talk in that zoo. No one. Nobody is coming to rescue you. You have a governor today now. Your governor is not allowed to enter where they, are, they, they have driven you away. Your governor has no say over there. Don't you see that you are gone? They have captured the zoo. They have captured it. If not for our Igbo Biafrans, everybody will have been gone in that zoo. That is why they are crying today now. 
So if you don't have synergy with your brothers and know whom you are, that you are a Biafra, that right now we are going to obey whatsoever decision that our brothers will tell us to do. We are going to hold hands with them. Oh, my dear, it is gone. You guys will be gone and nothing will happen. Just the way it's boasting it now that they will level you, then you will go and rebuild. You that doesn't even have money to eat now, where are you going to see money to rebuild your, your villages? Where are you going to build the small hut? Where will you see money to build the small hut that you'll be adding your head? No place. But they are telling you after, okay, some, he said he knew the person that uh, is uh, orchestrating everything, but he cannot go after the person. But he, he, they, they, they hold siege against a community. They hold siege, destroying houses, killing innocent people just because of one person that they said they are looking for. Meanwhile, the, the Fulani terrorists and uh, uh, Boko Haram and all the rest are having a field day with their blood in the north. But they cannot go and do that sh sh show of force over there in the north to make sure they break them all down. But they can come to Biafra land and do such a thing just because they have divided you. They have become, you create that stupidity in your mind that you are not an Igbo. You are not a Biafra. Because if, 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 if Parara, that, that, that thunder will strike, is confusing, confusing you people in that zoo. But Parara will come out and be deceiving you people that you are not this, you are not that. Meanwhile, there, they, if the if, like he said now, Parara will not be able to come out to go and challenge them. No way. If a governor cannot come out and challenge, is it Parara? They are all confusing. Look at your own brother Topolo. They gave him money, and he's selling his brother to the the Fulani who has come to keep it. My dear, a word is enough for a while. If you don't know yourself now, it's none of my business. They will not see me. That is just Thank the you. part. They will not see me. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. God bless Thank you, you my dear sister Ellen. Now, Ada Biafra. We, are, we can hear you. Oh, really? Okay, we can hear you now. We can hear you. Go on. Are, are you hearing me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So my people, a lot have been said. Uh, my worry sister and the last speaker have said it all. We really don't have to dwell on this. You know, Onyendu said one time, because I followed him a lot, that elephant is an animal you cannot just eat like that. That they would like to pieces it in order for the person to eat, be able to eat it. We, the Southerners, I mean, the Southeasterners, generally known as Biafra, they will always bring division among us. And if your mother ties to rappers, we are all the same. There's no difference between us. They just want to create that uh, dichotomy in order to be able to split us, to be fighting while they are taking our oil and our gas. And unfortunately for them, they lack management. They don't even know how to manage the money they, 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 they steal from our land. But we thank God that Mazin Namdekano and Obatubie, our prime minister, God brought them to, to liberate us from the shackles of these uh, inhuman people that came from Sahel. We are not related to them at all. That's why they don't have feelings for us. So we have to keep it here. In the meantime, we should always remember that we have something at hand. It started from 1st of February, our self-referendum voting, you know, and um, going to LATI, you need to complete your ID card. 
and everything is on the Biafra government in exile website www.biafrarepublic.org.gov.org. Sorry, I beg your pardon. So we have a lot to do, but the zoo they keep bringing us back to where we 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 left them because they need us more than we need them. They need us so much. Recently, they, they were trying to blackmail our brother, who is uh, unfortunately one Nigerianist. His aircraft uh, crew members were wearing locally made uh, dress, and they are tagging it uh, Igbo uh, dress, Igbo airline, Igbo this, Igbo that. All those. Um, racial bigotry we just have to overlook it and move on because we are special people special breed we always set the pace and others follow so my people let's remain focused and remain strong <coughs> we are one and god has blessed us thank you so much dear friends thank you my minister no. and the uh, my information minister. Thank you, thank you, Ezibuta Dabiafra. Mazi, Mazi, Honorable Minister, you make it close the issue for us, I beg. Thank you, <coughs> thank you, Biafran people. Thank you, the ministers of the Gospel of Biafra. And thank you to our Supreme Leader. Thank you to Waitana Leader. Thank you to the heroes and heroines of Biafra. Thank you to Biafra Defense Forces. Thank you to our Obato Bie. Obato so Obato Bie. Obato so Obato Bie. He came and he came to finish it all. And he is a great finisher. The Itiare Kondo of Biafra. Thank you for coming to finish the work that our ancestors started. The Agbaraguru, oh. you have to call it to Agbaraguru. The Agbaraguru. <laughs> <The Agbaraguru>. Wait, <laughs> the Agbaraguru is of a wish extract so that I can encode it. Urobo, Urobo. Okay, the Agbaraguru of Urobo. <laughs> yes, Agbaraguru of Urobo. That is thunder that destroyed the, the zoo. It's a thunder, fire thunder. Thank you, the Agbaraguru of Urobo. Yes. He has many names, and the archives of Biafra will keep all those names. Those names will be written in gold. So, without the Prime Minister of the Biafran people, a lot of things would have been upside down. And I thank God that with him standing his ground, the likes of Musa and his boys can be crying in Biafra land. Musa made a point that they have been going to the far north, and they do the show we display and come back to the media and tell the world they have neutralized 200, they have neutralized three, they have neutralized five, they have neutralized 500. Just for two audio, you know, they see any evidences. And they have been flexing their muscles and doing it the way they like and go anyhow and come around. But this time around, they said, oh, they are so shocked that the same team that they have been using to do the show we display in the north came to Biafra land and then they are getting the shock of their life. So that means there is a difference in the modus operandi. There is a difference in the show. There is a new sheriff in town. There is a difference in strategies and there is a difference that things must be done when you enter the terrain of Biafra. You thought it is the normal way that you go and then kill anyhow, walk around and then move. No, 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 no. But we want Biafran people to understand one thing. Old Delta State, old Bayelsa State is Biafra. And there is nothing any idiot can do about it. Not even Musa, not even Tunubu. I thank God that Musa in all his speeches has categorically stated that Tunubu is the one telling them to go and kill the youth in order to get the person that is behind the crime. So in every sense of understanding, Tinubu, just like Obasanjo did in 1999, 
killed and massacred and burned their friends in Odi. He is now in 2024 of the time of Tinubu, telling Musa, go and kill them, cut their heads off, burn the communities, ravage every nooks and crannies, destroy everything, and then come back and give me the report. And Musa said, I will not ask him further questions. As far as he has said, I should go and kill them. I will go and kill them, maim them, burn them down, destroy everything when I finish with no hesitation, then I will come back to come and give the report. So that is what Musa is coming to do. Need we not forget that these sons of Sodom and Gomorrah understands that we open a front for them in Imo State. And they got it very hot. The Kangaro photos and videos and the show with displays that they did in the media, which they were tagging it ESN, ESN, ESN. We asked them to go back there and do the same video again and come back and tell us and show us that Valley of David that they were showing us before. And then make the same video and stand there and then make everything to go viral again. They refused. We asked them to come back and tell the entire world what they got after a few days as they went back there. It's very easy for you to work with sabos to think that you can take the Biafran people down. But when the sabos are taken care of, the loopholes are sealed. But Musa cannot come back to tell the entire world what he got back from the Biafran people after that. We understand that the concentration of these non-entities has been in Imo State, which is where we are going to use to determine the firepower of Biafra to them. And they have been collecting it, woto woto, in thousands of ways. So they had to look for a way of diversion, divert the focus of the Biafran army from the ball, from the rising sun, which is set in Imo. They wanted to divert the Biafra Defense Forces attention away from the focus of dealing with them and delegitimizing their existence in Imo State. So when you see what is happening in Old Delta and Bielsa of Biafra land, do not be dismayed because everything is well planned. How do I explain this to you? If the chief of defense staff of the Federation of One Nigeria is telling you that we know the person that is behind everything, and he called the name, Abe Abati, called the name for him. They said he's a fake captain or a fake general, that they know him. He's the one that is the masterminder of everything. Then yet, they did not go to look for that person. Rather, they started burning the entire community destroying and killing the youth. So that means the aim and objective of what they did, this occupational army, was not to go and look for who they are talking about. It was to use this person as a cover-up to go in there, kill their friends, burn the communities, destroy everything in the land. If you knew who you were looking for, why didn't you go straight for that, for that person? Why go in to burn the communities and to destroy everyone around there. It is because it is a well-planned attack. They have to go and stage it that way, use one name. At the end of the day, you kill the youth, take their bodies away. Then as the uh, traditional ruler said, no, the killing must stop. The youth storm and say you cannot take him out. Then you use that same way and manner to kill more of them. And you are here telling us the commander in chief of the armed forces has instructed us to continue the killing until we finish burning down the communities. That after you finish burning them down, killing them all, they will rebuild it again. Obasanjo did the same. And after then, the cities of Odi was rebuilt again today. So it is in your own time of Tinubu that you must also destroy it. <laughs> but there is one thing you must understand that when you see us laugh and look at you like this, you don't understand the rage and the fury in us. If you do, you will not dare go and kill one Biafra. This is not that time of 1999 of Abbas Anjok. 
This is not 1966 to 70s. The bravery of beer friends today are quite different from what you saw before. Because we have seen too many dead and too many dead bodies and so much blood shed. Because the people that are supposed to have protected and defended our people are actually the ones that are aiding and abetting and deciding to walk as stooges to bring in these monsters to come and cut off heads of our babies, burn them in their sleeps. So in 2024, the Nigerian army with all their apparatus have met their doom. The Biafran government in exile, the Biafran defense forces will respond to you in the hard way. We've also seen Tinubu, the same Tinubu that is telling Musa to go and kill the people in Obaesa and Delta of Biafra. This is the same Tinubu that is shaking hands with his grandson, the newly elected president of Senegal, a visionary man. And I tell all of you here now that most of us in the Biafran Republic government in exile cabinet, most of us in the de facto government in the homeland executives, we are not up to 44 years old. We are just few that are at that age. But did Musa, did Tifinubu sit down to say, oh, I am resolving conflict or I want conflict to be resolved in Senegal and I love the way they now allow a youth to take over the governance and to allow the minds of the people to speak. Let me reciprocate them in Biafra issues. No, he needs iron hand and force. Buhari said, we kill over millions to keep Nigeria as one. And then Tinubu is telling you, kill Biafrans so that Nigeria will not be broken. And Musa is very proud to stay in front of the television and say it with everything inside of him. Don't worry. You will hear from the Biafra Defense Forces. We thank the Biafran people for listening and for our Biafran brothers and sisters in Obayosa and Delta. The Biafran government in exile are with you. The Biafran Defense Forces are with you. Stand your ground because we are not backing down. What is happening is part of the liberation. It's part of your freedom. It is one of those things that the enemies will use as a tool to see that they will shrink and weaken the ambers of focus so that the liberation will now deter. They will now wave away from the focal point and now drift into somewhere so that the zoo terrorists will capitalize on every loopholes. We tell you that we are watching everything and we are following everything up. In due time, the people of Obayesa and Delta will see and understand that they are back to their root and that no Biafran will be killed and they will now go scot-free without getting a reprisal. Remember that our fundraising is on a public note every Saturday, and you can visit the website at your disposal. Our convention of the Declaration of the Restoration of the United States of Biafra is coming up in November, December. Visit the Biafra Security Administration Database website and get accredited and wait for your voyage to Finland. See you in Lati. See you in December 2nd as we declare Biafra. Remember to apply for your ID card because it is the only identity that you have to identify yourself internationally and otherwise as a Biafran. Remember as well that we have the Biafran coin where you can stake your coin and make profit and make earnings. Just like you have other coins in the market that people can trade and make profit from it. The same applies to the Biafran coin. And it is a stable coin. It is not fluctuating like the Naira nonsense. Musa said they went to kill Biafrans in order to stabilize Naira. They went to kill Biafrans in order to see that oil and gas prices remain stable. It can never remain stable because 
you have been killing Biafran's to make the money. So Biafran coin is a stable coin and it is not falling or rising. No, it is standing. If it has to make a difference, the difference will appreciate instead of depreciating. So we want Biafran to understand that this very government have set everything in place to save the Biafran people and to restore Biafra. We have Biafra license offices in all countries where Biafrans are domiciled. And we are imploring all Biafrans to organize yourself and make sure you all establish your license offices and get them registered in your countries of residence. Because this serves as your embassies for you now and will be automatically converted to the embassies of Biafran people after Biafra is restored. We send message to Biafrans in Taiwan because we got a notice that there was earthquake in Taiwan and then there has been destruction of lives and properties. We sympathize with Taiwan as a country of refuge to the Biafran people. I tell you, anywhere you go that you see no Biafran, run away because that place is unworkable because Biafrans are everywhere. So wherever there is conflict in anywhere, the Biafran government in exile stands shoulder to shoulder with that country because of refuge that they have given to Biafrans in those places. Any country that we are, we are grateful to those countries for harboring Biafrans, allowing them to work there, giving them residence permits, and granting them asylums at that when due. Allowing us to integrate ourselves into your government of any country is the biggest of it all that any country can do. If our country that we came out from was good, we wouldn't be running out to other places. That is why Biafrans run out of the Zoological Republic to have a better life. But yet, every resources that is being harnessed in every other Western world country is taken out from our communities. That is why we need to restore Biafra so that we can go back and harness our resources and make use of everything without somebody making use of them for us. So Biafrans in Taiwan and the government of Taiwan, the Biafran government in exile and the facto government in the homeland under the leadership of my prime minister, Maazi Simon Ekba, the commander in chief of the armed forces sends his message in commensuration and in empathy and standing shoulder to shoulder with all of you that we are with you so biafrans it has come to our notice that when we try to make contact we didn't see biafrans coming out from there for us to know how they are faring so the government of biafra is calling on biafrans there to contact either the media team or any of the government officials or the number that was posted out on the official government website for us to know the welfare of Biafrans in Taiwan. Please reach out and contact any of the media teams of any of the government officials, wherever you are. We need to know how our citizens are faring where there is disaster. That is why you have a government where you can engage countries diplomatically, politically, and to be able to carry out and checkmate the welfare of your citizenry. That is the government of Biafra, and we look after our own. We are anticipating the restoration of the Biafran nation, and we call on all Biafrans to understand that the only hope of any man in this planet, either as a Biafran, is Biafra. Countries are taking and borrowing steps and standards and templates from the Biafran government in exile. Today, you see that the newly elected president of Senegal has adopted a new portfolio, and that is the prime minister's portfolio. Senegal now have a prime minister. Where did the dreams and aspirations and visions come from? It came from the visionary leadership of the prime minister of the Biafran government in exile. We have a leader, then we have a prime minister. So Biafra, is the light to Africa. Biafra shows you the way and you copy. Biafra teaches you and you learn. 
a nation that is not fully <laughs> restored yet is already teaching people of what to do. And they know the importance of a prime minister. They know the importance of a sitting president. So Biafra has come to stay and will continue to educate others. So as Biafrans do well to partake in the liberation contributions so that when your children and your grandchildren ask you tomorrow, Papa, why are you being treated as a foreigner in Biafra? You wouldn't be ashamed to explain why. Because most of you will be treated as foreigners in Biafra. And your children, children will ask you why. Why don't you have the same right with Masu Gochuku? Why don't you have the same right with Ada Biafra Betty? Why don't you have the same right with Wari Sister? Then you will be ashamed to tell your grandchild that while Simon Epa was the prime minister fighting to restore and to see Biafra, that you were on defense. You were one of those attacking Simon Ekba and you refused to contribute your one dollar. You work in America and you are making about 1,000 to 2,000 in a month. You cannot contribute even $25 for a month. But African Biafrans or Biafrans that are in Africa that makes $10 per day for a day job will be able to contribute something for their liberation monthly. But you, that is making about $80 per day, you cannot contribute $25 or $10 in a week. It's a big shame. So, like I normally say, answer your father's name so that your grandchildren will not be ashamed of you. Because the sins of the fathers will reckon on the children in Biafra when Biafra is restored. How your father contributed to the Biafran liberation will be a blessing to you tomorrow. How your father did not contribute to the Biafran liberation will be a curse to you as well tomorrow because you come out from that lineage, that family, you answer that name. That is why on the database website, children that are not up to age 18 are not compulsory to support the liberation financially. But you have to register them, put them on the database system so that we will know this child came from this loins. This child came from this loins. This child came from this loins. So that when we are tracing them, we will know their root. And their root really, really matters. I salute all Bia friends. And I say, GCK for supporting the liberation. Do not think that for you to support the liberation that you are doing the prime minister good. No. You're not doing it from the, for the prime minister. You're doing it for your own good. You're doing it for your children. You're doing it for your women. You're doing it for your families. You're doing it for your unborn children. It is not for Simon Ekba that you're doing it. It is not for Martin Namdekano. Because these two men are gifts to the Biafran people. And if they back down tomorrow, they will still be fine where they are. But you, you will be massacred like Musa said that the mandate that was given to them was to come and massacre all of you. And then after, they will come and give reports. I salute all Bia France. Pray for our Supreme Leader. Pray for our Prime Minister. And stand your ground till Biafra is declared. See you in Lati, Finland, 2024. They were my ministers of the gospel, and God bless all of you for spreading the message. They were. They were. Good night, everybody. Good night. Let's go and listen to Simon Eber, who is doing a very fantastic job. Very great job that Simon Eber is doing. Very, very, absolutely fantastic job that he's doing. You must listen to him and share his videos accordingly. Very, very important. He is bringing a new dimension to this very awareness that we are making. And you must listen to him. Very, very important. Okay.